Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of the Course Building Secrets Podcast. I am thrilled that you're joining us today. Hey, today I wanna talk a little bit about kind of the behind the scenes of what happens in our business in the fall. So as you can imagine, because we do course, the course edit, which is a course audit or sort of a course makeover for um, our clients that we work with, we also do it for ourselves. And so we're in the middle of doing that right now. So I want to just kind of uh, give you some insights and behind the scenes uh, sort of tips and tricks that we're dealing with as we're going through this process. So when you think about your online or digital program experience course, again, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. But however you're delivering your uh, signature framework to your customers online is what I'm talking about, right? So what happens or what tends to happen is you build your, um, your digital program and one or two things happen. One is you build it and you put it out there and you don't ever touch it again. Uh, or you continuously are adding additional um, kind of new videos or new content, um, new things that are coming up or insights that you have uh, gotten over the year. And so what, what tends to happen is it becomes a little bit of a mess, right? And so, uh, the, you know, most of the time when we're going in and auditing courses or auditing uh, digital programs, that's what we find is it's not a lack of content. It is too much content, right? Too many assets, too many things going on and not enough of simplified action that someone can use to actually get the results that they're looking for. So uh, our programs are no different. We go through them every single year to make sure that we're not just adding in extra miscellaneous pieces or uh, repetitive uh, items and that we're really staying focused on what the message is, how we can best serve and show up for our students in a digital way. And, um, and so again, we're going through that right now. It's a bit of a slog and, um, as it should be, right? Because we're, you need to look at it with a critical eye. When you're building a business, when you're growing your business, you don't just like sort of set it and forget it and hope that, you know, it, it sustains itself, right? Like your business is a, is a living and breathing, uh, entity, right? Sometimes it's a monster. Sometimes it's a cranky baby. Sometimes it is a freedom uh, creator that allows you to serve people in the best way uh, and get them results, right? So that's where we always want to keep our programs is to not have it be something that's sitting on the shelf or, um, you know, something that we're hiding. And, and I'll be honest, there's been a little hiding for me this year um, because there are some things that I know that I want to uh, elevate in my program. There are things that I know that I want to add or things that are maybe not in the right place based on some additional uh, you know, teaching or uh, experience that we've had around helping people uh, go through this process. And so I knew that it was time to sit down and, um, and, and really reevaluate uh, what was happening. All right, so a couple of different things. Number one, it, I, I just want to validate perhaps your feelings around this being overwhelming, right? Because it is, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming for us and we do this every single day with our clients um, because here's the reality is that it's really hard to audit and look critically at your own uh, program because you are looking at it from the lens of an expert and not the lens of a student. And so when you do that, you want to put in all the things, you want to make it this amazing experience where you give them everything. And the reality is, is they don't need everything yet. They need what they need to solve the problem that you have sold them. And so we just have a tendency to try and put too many things in. I use the analogy of like, it's really hard to see the label when you're inside the bottle, right? You're too close to it. You can't look at it critically. You can't look at it outside of your own expertise. So when we come in and we do an audit and we provide sort of a new roadmap, it provides that clarity for people um, 
that allows them to just sort of peel away all of the things. And so if you're in that position, just know that like this is a normal part of the process and that's why you hire someone to come in and and kind of, you know, cut through some of that. And again, we are no exception. We have people who come in and kind of give us the insights that we need to be able to see the label um, because we know we can't see it. We're too close to it. When I was running the agency, we would we would have outside people come in and do the quality control, do reviews of things, because once you get immersed in something, it's so hard to see uh, outside of it. So again, totally normal. Um, the other thing I wanna validate is if you are sort of hiding, like I mentioned earlier, um, it, you know, it's okay. And the reason that you're doing that is because it feels so overwhelming. Uh, I always think about when I ask my children, my teenagers to clean their room, and they're like, oh, you know, it's so hard, so hard. There's so many things. And and so, so so often that's what it feels like, right? And so I I go in to check the room and it looks beautiful and everything is great on the surface. And then I open their closet and like everything tumbles out. Yeah, right? Like that's sort of how it feels sometimes when you have your program is it's like, well, if nobody actually goes through it or if nobody notices how much stuff is in there or if they, you know, if they like going through all those things, then, you know, it's okay, right? Nobody will actually notice. And um, and so that's when you know that it's time to purge. It's time to go through all of those clothes in the closet and pick out the ones that you need to either toss or keep or donate, right? And so I love this time of the year uh, because just like with your house, you have to go through this process of, you know, kind of putting it into the different uh, categories in terms of what are you going to keep, what are you going to toss, what are you going to do donate or get rid of or give away for free or add to your content in YouTube or whatever you want to do with it, but it doesn't belong in, in your um, program anymore. And again, just to reiterate, what your job is when you're creating any type of program is to provide people with the fastest path to results. You are they are trusting you with your experience and your experience, maybe you went down a windy path. It doesn't mean that you're giving them that same windy path. You're giving them the life lessons, the, the you know competency, skill lessons that you've learned so that you can help them go faster, so that you can help them uh, achieve success uh, in the most efficient uh, way possible. And so we look at four different categories when we're doing uh, an audit. Uh, and again, this is in the course edit. And so we we dive deep into someone's business through these four categories and then provide a roadmap. So let me just give you the four categories so you can go and do this yourself and look at, look at your program, like do an honest assessment. Uh, so the first one is uh, your platform. So let's talk about your platform that you have all of your uh, digital assets in. Is it serving you? Are you able to see what people are doing and how they're progressing through your program? So when we talk about your platform, we're really looking at kind of where everything is sitting. How are you delivering the experience? How does somebody log in? How do they go through? What, what kinds of data are you getting around each of your students and how do you use that then to ensure that you're hitting the mark? and you're able to keep them moving. So that's um, one piece of it is we look at the platform. Is it serving you? Is it is it a, a cohesive experience that helps people actually get in and navigate? Or are you selling something and nobody's logging in, nobody's um, uh, participating, and when they do participate or they do try and log in, it's so confusing that they don't know what to do. Or you have things on like four or five different platforms and so people aren't sure where to log in or how to how to find this or find that or is this the same as this or is that the same as you know right it's, it's just too confusing and so do you have a comprehensive strategy uh, for how you're delivering all of the content okay so that's number one number two is the uh, experience that somebody is has as they are interacting with your assets, with you as a coach, with other students. How are you uh, 
um, leveraging the platform to help that happen because the um, the way that somebody experiences you, the digital version of your business is very, very important. Again, because are they confused when they come in? Do they not know where to go? Is it just this disjointed kind of, you know, journey of how do I get from point A to point B? And we want to make sure that that is as specific as possible. So we look at the experience. How are you helping increase participation and engagement and rewarding uh, people for taking action, providing feedback, providing activities. All these different things are things that we look at in, within your program to see like, how is it coming to life? How are you teaching this in a way that helps people actually get results? Learning isn't a passive activity. We have to put them in action, which means that there has to be some type of um, call to action for them so that they can apply what it is that you're teaching. Now, let me go into the most important piece, which is um, the, and I'm not doing these in necessarily in order, but the most important piece that we look at is, do you have a signature framework? Do you have a consistent methodology that you're walking somebody through that they see from the beginning in terms of a path, like a very clear roadmap of I start here, then I go here, then I go here, and then I go here. I'm not talking about how they're getting through the platform. I'm talking about how they progress from having a problem to getting that solution or that transformation that they're looking for. We call that a signature framework, right? So you have a unique methodology that's driving your business and it, it, it is literally the foundation to everything that you're creating. You could do one-on-one -on -one services. You could do um, done done with you. You could do uh, do it yourself. You could do a book. You could do like all sorts of ways to deliver your framework, your methodology. But do you have one? And if you do not have one, then anything that's in your program is just a bunch of topics and information kind of cobbled together. A, Adults like to see the big picture, right? They're not satisfied with just getting little parts and pieces of things. They want to see the big picture. The big picture for you in your foundation of your business is your signature framework. Do you have that? And is it very obvious to someone as they are beginning your program? And then is it consistently applied all the way through? So if you have, say you have seven steps in your signature framework, what should happen is that you should have a visual map for someone, right? So you have like a treasure map, right? Like you're starting here and this is where the treasure is, right? This is where the result is. And, and they can clearly see each step um, along the path. Don't be afraid to give them the steps from a big picture perspective. It doesn't mean that they're not going to go through your program. They're not going to buy. They're not going to do the things because the what is different than the how right? If they had the map, that's, you know, that's a great start, but they need to know how to implement the steps that you're giving them in order to move forward. And so foundationally, create that map. If there's no map in a program, we immediately will not go to the other three because that is the piece that needs to be worked on before anything else is tweaked. And so that foundationally, um, is the biggest is the biggest thing, and um, and so again, do you have a signature framework? For me, when I'm going through and auditing my program, I have a very clear roadmap. But once a year, I look at it and I'm like, is this still the roadmap? Is there another step? Can I take out a step? Can I combine a step? Is there some other mm, sort of way I want to uh, help them solve the problem in the fastest way possible? Maybe there's there's some changing that needs to happen. And most of the time I do, I change it up just a little bit because I can get more clear uh, and more succinct in terms of how I'm teaching it so that it helps people even get results faster and easier than my prior iteration. And so again, this is the third thing that we look at um, in terms of auditing a, a digital experience. And in fact, just even auditing a business in general. Um, when you're first starting out, this is the number one mistake that people make is they just say, oh, well, I'm an expert. I'm just going to teach people or I'm going to 
provide services for people, um, you know, as a freelancer or as a contractor or, con or you know, work for hire, and they're just going to pay me to do different things. And what what happens so quickly is that it morphs into this crazy sort of transactional um, relationship that you can't win, right? Because they're constantly asking for something. You're not leading them down a clear path you're like, well, I don't do that or I don't do this or, you know, yes, I'll do that, but it's more. And it's just like this weird conversation that's happening all the way through. So until you own your process, your signature framework, you can't actually provide consistent results for people, which means you can't scale your business. So again, critical foundational piece. This is the kind of the first thing that we're looking at as we go through and audit a program because it's uh, it's again, you, there should be a visual roadmap e either on the sales page in your signature presentation that you're talking about your program or immediately when someone comes in and you're onboarding them that you're like, all right, here's the map. Here's where we're going, right? We're going from Minneapolis to New York and we're going to follow these roads and we're not going to end up in a dead end. We're not going to end up in, you know, wherever else because I've got you covered, right? I've got the path. You just need to get on the path with me and I'm going to teach you how to get there. Okay, so that is the third one. The fourth one is your actual assets, right? The the videos, the worksheets, the um, activities, the quiz, it, like whatever the things are that you're creating to support the path. And so we look at all of those. And typically what happens in this uh, sort of category is... Um, this is where kind of the, the, you know, full closet comes out is you have created a, um, a new video, for example, on one of the steps. And instead of taking the time to go through and sort of reconfigure um, where that video fits, you just throw it in that section. And so what happens is you have like a bulky section that either is contradicting itself or there's, you're, you're repeating, um, and it's not succinct, it's not clear, and it's not, um, it's not something that people can consume without getting confused. I remember I was auditing a program, and I was about 17 or 18 hours in watching videos before they actually even got into sort of identifying the path of how to do what it was that they were teaching. And I was like, why am I going through all of this stuff at the beginning? And what had happened is they just put all their marketing videos in, right? So I created a video for this. I did a session here. I did a webinar here. And they just started putting all of that in. And and it's a really common problem because um, for whatever reason, there's this idea and maybe, maybe we can blame it on McDonald's, right, for supersizing things, but there's this idea that quantity is better than quality. And so if I give them more, they're gonna look at it and go, oh my gosh, this is so great, it's got all these things. And the, the challenge is that it's not quantity, it's quality, and it's how little can you put in that still will get people results. Right? So think about the fact that like everyone is so overwhelmed with information. Everyone is so overwhelmed with content. Everyone is so overwhelmed with all of the things. When you're trying to get a result, right? So you have a problem and you're trying to get to a result of the problem. Do you want to take a meandering path to get there? Or do you just want to solve the damn problem? Yes, you just want to solve the problem. And so when you're, you're um, working with a trusted advisor, right, or a trusted guide, you trust that they're going to give you the fastest play, way to get from the problem to the solution. And so the biggest challenge is like fighting that urge to put all of the things in the, your signature um, program. And, um, and so uh, that, is, that is a critical element to this. And I will say that um, I have seen very few programs from uh, business owners who do not have too many things in there, right? So there's a huge difference between marketing content, so content that's out in the wild that helps to attract your ideal co uh, customer to you, and course or program content. 
two totally different things. Once somebody has purchased your program, they don't need you to um, you know, convince them or give them content around why it's important to do the thing or to solve the problem. They need their problem solved. So when you're working one-on-one -on -one with someone, say they're in front of you, like at your desk, or you're in a, a live workshop, you're not going to be like, okay, so we're going to spend, you know, 20 hours in this room, and I'm going to give you every single thing I've ever, uh, I've ever spoken on. I'm going to give you all of the things that I've ever done in my entire life. And you're going to sit here for 20 hours in this room and, and, and consume it. You're not going to do that right? And so treat your online presence, your digital presence in terms of your program, whatever it is that you're fulfilling on, as like, remember that they're in the room with you. They are experiencing you and they're looking for a solution. Give them the solution as quickly as possible and help them overcome the hurdles and challenges that they're gonna have along the way, right? So that's practicing, that's looking at like, okay, here's where you may have a little bit of a challenge. Let's have some conversation around that. Let's work through that particular problem. Um, if you're in a, um, again, if you're in a live room and you're like, okay, here's a challenge that you may have, right? Here's a problem, a common problem that you may have around this topic. You're gonna put people in groups, you're gonna have them work through something, you're gonna have um, some type of way that they are going to try and solve a, a simulated version of that problem. Do that in your program, right? That is much more valuable when you put them in the driver's seat than it is just giving them 20 hours of you, um, you know, doing different presentations and doing different things. They can see all of that out in the wild, they don't need it behind the paywall they need you to give them the result. And so, uh, so again, those are the four big things that we look at when we do a course or program audit. And, um, and we get deep, we get deep in people's programs, which is why I can tell you that these are the four, kind of the four big things that people are struggling with in order to keep their customers and to send them to their next offer and to really create a program that, they're proud of that can be something that is is their signature program right a high ticket premium experience that they're providing for people so that they know that it's a, a consistent experience they know it's getting results and it becomes an amplifier for what they're doing in their business it doesn't become that thing that you're sort of like okay i'm just gonna sell it or whatever else it becomes the powerhouse that helps you grow and scale your business. So hopefully this served you today. I, it's just funny because um, again, like I said, we do this every year and we really look critically at all of the different, um, it, all the different parts and pieces of our program in, in these four categories and make sure that we are um, not only, you know, that it's cleaned up and it's the best um, experience for people, but that we're using tools that make sense for what we're doing. Where you we're looking kind of out there in in the space and making sure that where we are is where we need to be um and so hopefully this serves you gives you a little bit of a sense if you wanted to do that course audit um, yourself it gives you a sense for how to start looking critically at your programs i will tell you like i said this is what we do every single day with our clients and what we've been doing for many many years and so if you do need help with this just give us a shout I'm happy to have a phone call just to talk through kind of where you are. Maybe there's one of the three or one of the four that you feel like is really where you need to focus and you kind of know you need to focus, like you open the closet door and all the clothes are going to come out. Yeah, so um, so give us a shout. We're happy to um, have that conversation. All right, there you go. Have a great day. And until next time, go out and serve your people.